off. Let's have a look then. Oh, lovely stuff. Very nice. Yeah, they literally just came out the bed. So yeah, shit, they're really hot. Seems to have done it alright so far. I just made some breakdown. <laughs> Bristol-based night um, run by myself, Ellie, and Eric, Ed, Matt, Josh, and Felix. Yeah, so me and Josh started it, um, and then Josh was like, hey, I know this guy Felix. He's done parties before he makes music. He's in some music. And I met Felix, and then, um, and then I asked Ellie to help get on board with the helping with like the logo and stuff, and she made this logo that we're still using today. I um I really like the logo, even if people say it looks like a wasp. I, mean, <laughs> I um remember in the summer before we started, like trying to pick a logo, and I I thought this one was really good. Uh, some of the ones that we had before <laughs> they were terrible. I love crafters. I've got a soft spot for like, like a. It's just a, I think it's the best venue for like a sort of just like fun midweek night. Without a venue like Crofters, we probably wouldn't have been able to put on our first night. It's the perfect place to like get started with these sort of things. I came into Beeswax just after the big blue mountain night. Um, and Ed just asked me one day, he said, yeah, I'd, I'd like you to get involved with Beeswax. We couldn't really do it without each other, could we? Yeah. Oh, especially this year. I mean, like, that. yeah. I mean, this year because Josh and Felix have been away, mm. um, they've taken like a back seat. Yeah, yeah. Felix's productions are really good, um, and it would be great if we could put them out properly somehow. But putting out the cassette was really cool. Cool to do something different. Yeah, yeah. So Felix makes a light box. I remember looking around and I like to try to get loads of quotes on it. I was like, how much does it cost to get one of those, one of those things that you see everywhere? And <laughs> Felix just popped up like, yeah, I'll make it. <laughs> and when he was listening for these things, I was like, fucking hell, what's he gonna make? Like, <laughs> uh, kind of like, Crown Jewels is probably like, Cast Voyager in that crew. Because that was us doing exactly what I said. It was us saying like, there's this really cool sound coming out of Morocco that like people are listening to here, but like maybe people haven't thought about even bringing them over yet. And then when we got the chance to do that, that was like, we take the box like directly there. The crowd was loving it. And I've never seen such a happy bunch that were all focused on the music. I didn't see a single person on their phone. Everyone was 100% invested. I'd say Castle Voyager, just because it was so momentous of an occasion to have a label from somewhere like Morocco, who are still pretty unheard of in this country, to be there on their UK debut. And they played for us on what was only our fifth or sixth night ever, and we managed to score them. Oh, 
on Gloucester Road we've done Crofters, Levin and Blue Mountain and number 51 and Tate 5. So we've done quite a lot, not done Lakota, um, which would be great to do, but quite a step up in terms of money capacity. We wanted to like try out a different space that's more orientated towards, or like more specific towards the kind of music that we play or promote. So we're gonna have an event at the island with Ploy and DJ Marcel. Marcel emailed me today yeah. and was like, are you worried about it? Like, um, she was like, apparently in Holland, um, they've cancelled events of over 100 people. Yeah, yeah that's by law though. Everything here is being done on a whim. No one's consulting anyone. Yeah, if it weren't to happen, it'd be a massive nightmare just because you spent all of this time organising an event and it's, you know you don't do it in a day, it's a long process. So I think there's a lot of people that want to come to our event and it'll be a real, real shame if they can't. Yeah, we just want everyone to stay safe. I think Marcel was the kind of one at the start we were like, we need to book her. And Ploy was the kind of name that we thought would bring people in to come and see her. And that's the thing, I guess, booking smaller, smaller artists and having to, at the same time, sell tickets is the problem. Ploy's a bit more, you can kind of expect what he's going to play. Ploy would be much more kind of down the UK techno route. Marcel uses three turntables, which is pretty unusual. Um, she needs a particular type of mixer. She needs a light to like three lights for each turntable. Um, yeah, it's going to be pretty manic. I kind of respect that the approach she has and the kind of I don't know. Yeah, she's, she's not different. not ready to she's make different. exceptions for the sake of kind of like what's cool and what's kind of like trendy. Ad's going to interview DJ Marcel for 1020 Radio on the night. And he's spoken a lot about it and he's been prepping his questions and I think he's really looking forward to it. Hello, hello, hello and welcome to this very special episode on 1020 Radio with Beeswax. I'm joined with DJ Marcella. Hi there. Also known as Another Nice Mess. How are you doing today? Um, like, <laughs> my biggest worry is that I'm going to ask a question. She's going to be like... That, that's a stupid question, why have you asked that? But that's just because I don't she will. That's great. I will right, we'll sign out on that and you can catch us with Marcel and Ploy at the island tonight. Yeah. Uh, tickets still on sale for £11 and yeah, it's going to be wild. Thank you. How many tickets are we at now? 23, I'm still in today. Yeah. <laughs> Which is... How have we not seen any? Yeah, the post is good. Jamie's a very good artist. Mm. Yeah, our post is great. I, I think it's gonna... It's amazing the difference that a good poster can make to a night. As we kind of like established like... a kind of format, it's kind of gone with that. It looks quite nice. Really love the new one though. The, Island one is like probably my favourite so far out of all the new ones we've done. Yeah, the posters have got significantly better. I think the poster for the identified patient night was a huge factor in how many tickets we sold. He's the biggest name that we've booked amongst the sort of scene he's, he's very well known. Identified patient was great. Um, he didn't quite fit in the venue, he was like such a big guy. But yeah, he brought such a good vibe and the kind of music he's playing is great. Something that's got to be massively wrong about promoting is like the identified patient night couldn't have gone better, like completely sold out and we made 20 pounds. Sort of says a lot about the
the industry and the people that are doing it are purely doing it because they love it because there is no other reason to do it. I think we did that as well as we could have and like I say, only made 20 quid. We love music. We love finding artists that we enjoy. We love bringing them along to play for us. And as a byproduct, people also enjoy that and they come to our nights and they buy some tickets and it generates enough revenue for us to just about keep going. And that's, that's what I prefer. That's why I'm involved with this. So we were going to give out two Love Saves tickets um, as part of a competition just to you know, get people interested in the event. We've just bought a couple of tickets to Love Saves today, which everyone will want to go to every year, as they always do. Um, and just going to give them away for free to people who share it, share our event and, and say they're going to it, which hopefully in turn will get us a bit of exposure and sell us some tickets. So the island is one of my favourite venues in the city by a long way. And ever since I started doing beeswax, I always wanted to do a night there. So I was very excited that we finally are going to do one. Um, it's definitely been an aim since we started doing it for me anyway. Um, it's a great lineup to do it with. We don't really know what's going on with coronavirus, unfortunately. I think everyone's just going to put everything on pause for the minute. Well, actually, saying that, yesterday we weren't in a position to even really think about cancelling the event today, more so just because a few people have been diagnosed with it. Mm. It's definitely going to cost us a few tickets. I think it's already cost us quite a everyone, few. Everyone's selling their motion no tickets. No one wants to go out. In the next couple of months, not going to be going to clubs at all. I guess, luckily, we're sort of fortunate in that we haven't got any slight events set in stone for the next couple of months because I think a lot of small promoters like you know no student promoter has insurance or anything like that you know you've got absolutely no chance um, so really not good for like the events industry and for the DJs themselves yeah it's fucking crazy but hopefully we can get this last party in while everyone's still somewhat safe and sound Be the first.